Okay, let me know if you guys can see the screen, the PowerPoint presentation. Perfect, wonderful. So I'd like to welcome everyone once again to the Innovative Teaching Grants presentation. Um, we, on behalf of the Education Foundation Board, I'd love to welcome you again to this presentation. And I want to see, I'm just kind of curious to see what, are you guys seeing a slideshow? Or are you guys seeing just um, like a panel on the side, just to double check? It looks like a slideshow. Okay. Okay, um, the screen that you're seeing right now, does it show, does it say new guide and revised application? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I'll begin this presentation by sharing that the Education Foundation's ITG application has been completely revised and reformatted into two separate documents. The ITG application guide will serve as a tool to help you better understand the purpose and guides the grant. You'll find that the application itself has also been reformatted and transformed into a fillable document. So we'll talk a little bit about the grant timeline. Today marks the official opening of the grant application timeline. And as you see the timeline, the application is, has already been released. If you had a chance to take a look at the um, Education Foundation webpage, it's already been posted. And I have also shared this with your campus principals so you can also obtain a copy from them. The application deadline is Friday, June the 3rd at 5 p.m. There will be no extensions and no exceptions. On Friday, June 25th, all of the grant proposals that have been submitted to, to me will be submitted to the ITG Selection Committee. In July, the ITG Selection Committee will convene and review the application. When we review the application, it it will, it typically takes um, anywhere from one to two, maybe sometimes three days. It really depends on the number of grants that we receive and the information that we review within each of the grant applications. Also in July, we will schedule a time to meet with our board of directors. Once the, the review committee gets together, they will narrow their um, grants, recommendations, and present them to the board for approval. And then in August, um, we will have our convocation. We're expecting to have our convocation uh, back in person, and we are looking forward to announcing our grant uh, awards on that day. Uh, by the way, uh, I do have a chat feature um, initiated. Um, I will have some frequently asked questions uh, towards the very end of the presentation. And so somewhere along the way, I may address some of the questions that you may already be thinking of. But by all means, please write down any questions that you have with regard to the Innovative Teaching Grant. Okay, so what is an innovative teaching grant? The uh, school district has, um, at the board of trustees has appointed the San Felipe Dorio CISD Education Foundation as a 501c3. Um, they are an entity, which is a nonprofit organization. This organization is separate from the school district, which provides teachers and educators with the resources and tools needed to impact student achievement within the school district. So the goal of this nonprofit organization is to fund 
unfunded projects that bring innovative, creative, original, and out-of-the-box learning practices into the learning environment. We fund, I want to reiterate, that the funding of these grants are solely for projects that are initiated by educators in the school district. And we typically fund projects in which otherwise would not be funded with a regular budget, uh, a school budget. So who can apply? Um, as I mentioned earlier, any individual partner or educator, the educator teams employed by the district who directly provide instruction or any related support services to students attending the school district can apply for this grant. So what does that mean specifically? That means that if you're a teacher, if you're a counselor, if you are a dyslexia teacher, it, it, as long as you provide direct instruction or services to students, you may apply for the grant. You can apply as an individual. You can partner up with someone. You can uh, submit an application as a team. And you can also submit an application on behalf of a campus. So, um, so there are so many different opportunities uh, for submitting the application. Now the application itself will need to be reviewed by your campus principal because the campus principal has a role in looking to see if the need and the actual project will be something that will benefit the students on your campus. And does it apply to any of the goals, the district goals or campus goals that, your camp, uh, that you may have. All right, so let's take a look at the application itself. So as, uh, by the way, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, there's a huge revision that we did on the grants itself. The innovation, Innovative Teaching Grant has been uh, split up into two different documents. We provided an, uh, a guide as well as the actual application form. So whatever I'm presenting to you through this presentation and in this pres uh, PowerPoint is actually what you will see in the application guide. But I'm also sharing pictures and information on each of the application pages or pages of the grant application itself. So let's take a look. What you're going to see as well is you're going to see some little flags, a little post-it flags. And those little post-it flags are things that you want to consider. So as you see, the application itself is a fillable document. So it's been transformed uh, into a fillable document. And we want you to look at three areas here. We want to know all about your project idea. We want to know if this is a brand new application or if you are reapplying for continued funding on a previously awarded project. So you need to check one of those two pot boxes. And then we will ask some questions. We wanna know what grade level or student groups will be served. Who is, who's this grant um, project for? How many students will be benefiting from the project? And what is the target date in which this tar uh, excuse me, project will be implemented? And then how much, what are the total grant funds are being requested? This is your cover sheet. The applicant will need to sign at least if there are, if there is a team. So we need for you to select a, a leader and that will be the applicant. And then the principal signature. So this is very important that the principal reviews the grant application form in its entirety so that they are aware as to what the um, what the grant um, application that you're submitting what is it all what is it all about okay so the grant application the, the very first page of this part of the application is called the abstract summary page it's otherwise known as the pitch page 
this is what where you pitch the idea to the ITG review committee and provide them with an insight into your project. But you must be to the point. It is a brief page in 100 words or less in which you will describe the who, what, and why about your project. How is it innovative and how will it spark student learning? So in this narrative, this is the narrative, the, the page that the grant committee looks at the most. They, they get the gist of the grant um, application from this particular page. On this next page, this is the page on page four. You will see the area of need. You will need to describe how your project will address a specific need for the students that you will be addressing at your campus. You will also want to explain if the project is aligned with any specific district or campus level goals. And in the section regarding objectives, the committee wants to know what your objectives are for completing your project and how you will be measuring progress along the way from start to finish for both you and your students. And on page five, you'll see a project timeline. So the project timeline provides a visual of the project's events and activities. It's important to note, and you'll see the little flag there, that your application maximizes the time spent with students to spark learning. Also, you shouldn't wait to start your project at the end of the second semester to complete your project activities. This is one of the things that the project committee is looking for, is that we're looking at awardees, but the projects don't get started until April of May of the second semester. So we want a project, we're well, looking for a project that will, that will explain and start showing maybe perhaps little things along the way that will show some sort of project. So we wanna see a timeline. The grant committee also loves to see projects that involve other organizations. So the section on community partners is that the role of the community partner is to support your project from in one form or fashion, not the other way around. As an FYI, the Education Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose sole purpose is to fund innovative teaching grants and scholarships for seniors. We cannot provide funds to other nonprofit organizations. So this particular area, we need to know if you're going to involve any community groups or organizations in your project, what is their role? And the next part is uh, the evaluation piece. So briefly, you're going to describe how you will determine success of the project. How was it successful? How will you evaluate it? Will you use an assessment? Will you use a rubric or maybe even a survey? And then finally, you want to carefully plan your budget. What will it cost to fund your innovative idea? So this will take some time. We understand that you may be thinking of a project but you wanna carefully look at it because here's some FYIs for you, whoops. We want you to note that the Education Foundation will not consider funding for proposals for projects that request supplies and materials that can be provided through school district funds. So don't include that in your grant application. So if you're asking for paper or you're asking for Things that the school can already provide for you, we cannot fund. We cannot fund projects that request technology devices that, that can be provided already through school district funds. And then finally, 
we cannot fund projects that will provide grant funds to other nonprofit organizations. So this last page is just as important as the very first page. And this page, you may have seen it if you've applied for an innovative teaching grant application before, you would have seen this page. This is the page that lists the criteria in which the team, the committee, reviews all the application and weights and provides the score for your application. So this is the criteria. How does your innovative idea grant or your proposed project, is it innovative and does it spark student learning? Does the project, is, it, is the need clearly stated and does it support both the school district and your campus goals? And then the objectives for the projects, they are specifically stated and they're measurable. You've provided a timeline of activities and pro procedures and it's clearly stated and it's relative to the purpose and the objectives of the project. And then the proposed project includes an evaluation strategy that, you will that will determine the success of your project. Is it relevant? What's relevant to student performance? Did they do, because remember the grant is to spark student learning. How will you measure it? And how will you evaluate it? The proposed budget that you submit, is it complete? Is it realistic? Is it appropriate? And is it allowable? So you wanna ask yourself those questions. The applicant, so does your application plan for future sustainability of the project? Now, I will tell you that the um, committee looks at this one area very carefully. What this means here is that we, if we're funding your project, how will you sustain it the year after you've implemented the project and, and, and thereafter. How will you see this project continue year after year and you're able to sustain it on your own? And then the last item there is the proposed project includes participation and support of parents, community and or business partners, okay? So the committee will take a look at each of the indicators and each of the criteria, they will weight your application and then they will create a weighting total. And then at the very bottom, they will ask themselves, I would definitely recommend this funding project because it sparks student learning. I, I totally see this as an ITG grant. They maybe perhaps they will recommend partial funding. Maybe they think that um, this is good, but maybe I will, we, we can only provide a certain amount. And then I would recommend funding this project if there was extra money, maybe perhaps um, it, it had some high points there, but maybe perhaps we just didn't have enough money to fund the grant at this time, or they would not recommend funding the project. And then uh, they will put some comments in there. Now, this page, what will the, the board, the um, Education Foundation Board, once they, the committee comes together and they review all the applications, they will look at the ones that score the highest and they will propose the funding to the board. And then the board at a later time will approve. They will say, okay, we have X amount of dollars. We did very well on our fundraisers and we can fund all of these grants. They, there's been occasions in which they have gone back because we've had applications that maybe were um, listed or checked with, um, we, would, we would recommend this funding if there was extra money. And then we found the extra money that we had extra money and we were able to include them as, as part of the grant. 
So just know that every application has a wonderful chance of, of getting funded if they meet all of this criteria and really explain how their project will be both innovative and spark student learning. Okay, so here are some frequently asked questions. So over the past couple of years, our committee has gotten together and they've shared some things with me and I've seen some things as part of the, of the grant selection committee. And, and here are some FAQs. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about some of these FAQs, but if there are any other questions that you have at the end of the session, we'd love to, to have you um, add them to our screen, um, our chat, and then we can certainly follow up and expand on the FAQs. So what makes this application eligible and attractive? Inquiring minds wanna know, well, how will I know that my grant application will be eligible and attractive? Well, there are proposals that are well thought out. They're not rushed and turned in at the last minute. We can tell when, it, when an individual, when an educator has turned in a grant application that has been well thought out and well articulated, well prepared, and clearly describes how their innovative instructional approach is designed to spark and support student learning. The proposals include a detailed description of activities and expenses. They don't have to be expensive. Remember, a project does not have to be expensive to be effective, but it must be well thought out to support the educator's creative, original, and out-of-the-box learning practices. Proposals include a timeline of activities and objectives implemented during the school year, and they're not last minute projects. As I mentioned earlier, it must be completed well before the last day of the grant year in which it was awarded. Proposals contain information on how the applicant will sustain the project in the future. And proposals include an evaluation tool that measures the success of the project after it has been implemented. Here's some more FAQs. Can a department or a team cluster apply? Absolutely. Any individual partner or educator teams employed by the district who directly provide instruction or any related support services to students attending the school district may apply for the grant. If you have already received a grant, can I reapply for an extension of a pre-awarded grant? The answer is yes. Prior grant recipients may be eligible for continued funding. However, the applicant must reapply and they must sub submit a proposal for an extension of the original grant project. The proposal will be reviewed using the same selection criteria as a new grant proposal. And the submission of a grant proposal for an extension does not guarantee that they will be awarded the funds. Okay, so we're getting down to the very end here. So where can I get the ITG application? So blank ap applications and forms have been sent to your campus principal and you may request them from the principal or you can download them yourself online out of the school district's education foundation webpage. And so I'm afraid that if I click this hyperlink, I will share with it to you later. But if, if I do this, I may lose the actual presentation or um, so I'll share that with you right afterwards. And how do you submit it? Um, you can submit your application in person here at the SPC front desk. They will date and timestamp it. And you want to address it to the Innovative Teaching Grant Selection Committee. You can bring it to my attention, Sandra Hernandez. Um, you may also deliver it via intercampus mail and send it to me directly. Please do not email your applications. 
do not send your applications by email. It needs to be received in person or by inner campus mail. And as a recap, all applications are due by 5 p.m. on Friday, June the 3rd. And we'd love to wish everyone the best of luck, good luck on the submittal of your applications. And I will close the session and open it up for questions. We'll stop the share here, right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at the chat. Um, for the budget proposal, does the vendor need to be an approved school vendor? Great question. So the typically we'd love for it a vendor to be an approved school vendor, but not necessarily. If there is a, a let's say that there is um, an, um, it, there is something that um, you want to purchase and it's a sole source and only that particular vendor has that particular item, then you can certainly add it. We want you to include it. This is why that particular section is there for you because we'd like to know who the vendor is and we'd like to know um, how, um, if it's something that, that, this is a question, for example, with your campus principals or even your budget secretaries, uh, you know, is there, is this vendor or a school district vendor? Or can we use it as a sole source? But we do want you to know, but because it's an ITG grant, more than likely we're gonna approve all of the vendors, okay? So there's not gonna be that red tape that you would have typically if, if it was a, uh, you as a teacher requesting the item out of the district budget. So it's completely different because these are grant funds. Okay, um, there's a question, who or where can we get additional support on filling out the application? Um, you can certainly um, give me a, send me an email, give me a ring. Um, I have to think about my extension 4073. Um, you can call me if you have any specific questions about the application itself. Great questions. Are there any other additional questions with regard to the application? All right, so we are looking forward um, to receiving these applications. It's always a lot of fun and it is just uh, so rewarding to see the applications when we get to see them and we get to read about them. And um, we, one of the first discussions I will recommend to you, you wanna have a discussion with your principal and share the ideas that you have. What idea do you have with regarding um, a project idea? And how, who do you want to address? And what is the group that you want to target? And so those conversations are going to be um, the best conversations. Um, and, and certainly will help you along the way. So you want to pre-plan, you want to take that opportunity to start working through your application. Um, don't rush through it and you know, take your time with it. And I am available at any time if you have any other specific questions about the grant. Okay, I'm gonna check one more time. I don't see any additional questions on the chat. I want to thank everyone for joining me this afternoon and the best of luck to everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.